Thursday. I know that ain't who I think it is. <laughs> hey, what's up, y'all? Hey, everyone. We have what's up, Coach? no offense, Coach. We got our second favorite LV in the building now. Okay. Who's number one? I prefer the <laughs> Louis of the Vuitton. <laughs> <laughs> Louis V. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, if it's not Louis V, hey, our I second favorite right. LV, Larry Vickers out of Norfolk State, Coach. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How about yourself? Uh, doing well. Happy to have you here. Oh, we're going to have fun. It's always it's always fun when the green and gold. Shout out to Marcus. Yes, salt and pepper are here in full effect. He's a spin. <laughs> Marcus is a spin. Yes, he prefers umbrella. <laughs> Yes, it's always have it's always very fun to have a member of the the green and gold. Now, Coach, I have a task for you. Last time, um, we got somebody on from Norfolk. Okay. It was Coach Jones. He brought the he he brought the fire. It was funny. He's in my top three. So I'm hoping that that's you know a, you can fun. you can beat him out. I, I, I can I guarantee. You. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> okay. I'm surprised. I, I was looking to see if he popped in already, but. It doesn't look like he has. Oh, trust me. We'll let you trust me. He'll let us know when he's popped in. Oh, yeah. Southside Queens. <laughs> Everybody's going to know. But hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of HBCU period where we talk about all things HBCU period. Today, we're joined by Coach Vickers. Now, I'm excited for this interview. I know Mia is too. Yeah, oh, want to go of ahead course, and take you in? know. Let me brag on the coach real quick. Raining. Me at raining. Raining. Like raining, like the raining. ink still dry on that trophy raining. Like it ain't even dry yet. Mm -hmm. Raining mm -mm. women's basketball me at championship team, championship coach, Coach <laughs> Vickers. And also for those of you that don't know, uh, you watch in March Madness. I uh, remember the upset, Norfolk State over Missouri. It's since been surpassed, you know, I think the betting odds, but still one of the biggest upsets. Guess who was on that coaching staff? None other, none other than that Coach Garvey. Vickers. There. So when it comes to March Madness, when it comes to basketball, we got a treat for y'all. Period. What a great <laughs> opening. What a great opening. I'm motivated now. <laughs> A great intro. okay go just you know, we know we have Southside Jamaica Queens coach Rob Jones who are you shouting out today oh, where are you from Let, I'm, I'm, no, from, yeah, I'm, from? I'm from the beach where I'm a from? beach boy I'm from Virginia so Virginia <laughs> Beach is where I'm from probably about 20 minutes from here so okay. I stayed close to home when I went to school okay yeah. Yeah, so Virginia two up two Girl, down you know, do I need to name the Virginia here. great show I'm talking about Southside you obviously got <laughs> great basketball players, AI, Joe Smith, great football players all over the place, great artists. You know, a lot of talent come from Virginia. So we're, we're, we're proud of our area. Okay, I feel it. Yeah, for, sure. uh, for those of you that may not know, before there was Joe Bryant. Woo! And you can say a lot about Joe Bryant in his career at Norfolk State. Hometown kid, worked his way up, did a lot of amazing things. Before it was Joe Bryant, maybe was it a decade earlier, a little bit earlier? There was Larry Vickers, <laughs> well, the yeah, shot blocking machine, yeah, and well, I... also the, one of the top rebounders in Norfolk State history. Coach, I want to start it off from you as a player, okay? Defense, like defensive player. How you know, how do you kind of model who you were as a player to your team? Uh, I think when I got to college here, one of our coaches said, like. He has length like Stacy Augman. I know y'all don't know who that is. But hey, break it Stacey down. Aug Stacy <laughs> Augman from the ULV running Rebels. And uh, I played for one of those coaches, similar to myself, that said, like, you, you're not going to get on the floor if you didn't play no defense. So uh, that was my goal from – I said, you said what? Okay, I can do that. Like, that's something you can control every day. You can control your effort, how you play. Um, so that's where we started off. We started off on the defensive end and then – once, you know, I kind of got a couple accolades for it. I said, I'm just going to dive into this and not really much worry about the scoring piece. I didn't have no jump shot. I see we got a couple jump shooters in here. That wasn't my strength. I was down low, but um, 
definitely, definitely started on the defensive end. Yeah, what the fuck ain't got on your block party? Coach, apparently. Right. Hey. <laughs> That's all you bring. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Coach, being mm -hmm. that you were a player at one point, how do you use that knowledge and that perspective? Um, well, how, how have you used that uh, structure? I just career? turned 40 last year. So Ooh. I've got to the point to where I'm super old. So I can still kind of relate to him a little bit. Uh, you know, we have our Jay-Z little baby discussions over here. You know, we have our our Nas verse young boy discussions around here. So I'm not that old. So at this point, I can still kind of relate to him. Um, you know, we just kind of go in day in, day out from, you know, from that. Just trying to relate. That's that's really the main thing. Be easy okay. to talk to. But who win in those debates, Coach? Oh, I always win. I always get the final word, so. <laughs> Always <laughs> win, um, and then numbers don't lie. You know, not, numbers don't lie. All right. So since you got to bring it up, while it's still fresh, we got to ask about it. Like, give me, give me three on my playlist. On your playlist. Okay. Right now. Um. Yeah. Oh, Lord, he uh, might say some Top three. The, he might say that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm 40 now, so you got to take my my favorite rapper. My favorite rapper is Mace. So Mace was my favorite rapper. So, yeah, Mace, okay, I like it. Uh, the Wu Tang Clan, and Jay Z. Those are my three. I got to include the whole Wu. From now on, days, I like J. Cole. He cool. And Drake. Just cool. Just cool. Just cool. Drake is cool. That's a great answer, right? There. Drake is cool, you know, but I don't listen to really some of the other people they talk about. Like, I won't throw no names out, but I don't listen to them. Do you got a female rapper? Oh, uh, yeah, of course, Nikki. Here? You know. Okay. Yeah. Coach, yeah, I, I thought he was going to bring out yeah. a little thought. So nah, 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 nah. Eat some early. Nah, Nikki, number one, she the GOAT for the female rapper. She number one. So my players keep her in our in our pre-practice playlist. So I hear a lot of Nikki. Man, give me a Oh, me yeah. A we can send that to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give, we'll me, give me some gear. We'll yeah, put a little song, Louis Vuitton you know. little circle on it <laughs> so it can, it can go. Oh, yeah. Our second favorite LV. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you got to brand that, Coach. I promise you. Every woman in America, yes, Larry Vickers, our second favorite LV. But, Coach, you started it off. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. And here's my favorite number about this squad. Oh, whoever said Rhapsody, I love Rhapsody as a female rapper. But back to the question. One number that sticks out to me about your team, we talked about defense. You guys led the nation. And led the nation means ahead of quite a few powerhouses, ahead of UConn, ahead of South Carolina, ahead of LSU, ahead of Duke. Led the nation in a, what is it, a scoring yes. defense? Scoring so defense they gave up the more. fewest points in the nation. Yeah. Mm. How was it for you to see your team kind of really embody that defensive? Like you said, you say you, you got to play defense to get on the court. Yeah. Turns out all of them playing defense because. Sure. Sure. <laughs> um, you know, our numbers have been really good over the last seven years, like really good. There's been a couple years we finished second and third and fourth. But, you know, we brought in some really good rebounders this year. So that kind of just took us over the edge defensively. You know, we led by back-to-back uh, -back defensive player of the year, Camille Downs. So Camille really does her thing in there, getting steel, shooting gaps. Uh, Naya Fields, Deja Francis at the top with Da, Donasia Williams. So um, our length at the top gave teams issues. And then on the back line, our rebounding core with our forwards, McCoy, DR, uh, Mimi Wheeler, Kiara. Um, Sky Robinson, Mo Williams. So, you know, we just kind of put it all together. Uh, we kind of laid out our goals earlier in this year. We knew we wanted to be a 25-win team. And uh, I told them defensively, I, I felt like we could be great. And we accomplished a, a lot of those things. Given your history of being a post player, do you work with them specifically? And if you do, well, this, what this do is you my biggest four them? group. I've had in my seven years. Um, it's been difficult. Like, I had D, Khadija Croker, she transferred from Virginia Tech. But other than that, we've kind of been guard driven. 
you know. So this year I enjoyed doing my, my forward workouts. Um, Kayla Roberts, she was another former player of mine. She played like the three and the four for me. She joined my staff this year. She kind of helped me with player development from the forwards. So, yeah, it helps a little bit. It helps. It helps. So. Since you've mm -hmm. coached both men's and women's teams, how do they differ and how did you take what you learned from coaching men and how are you using it currently? Because, I mean, although it's basketball, yeah, yeah. there are There's a lot of differences. differences. Um, I'll say <laughs> when, when I first got the job, people would call me who kind of made the transition before. And they were like, with the men, you got to coach the ego. And with the women, you got to coach emotions. Uh, my team really doesn't let me see their emotions on the floor very often. Um, you know, they're kind of an even kill program at times. You know, sometimes we get a little rowdy, get a couple texts. But overall, we're kind of even kill. Um, so the biggest difference, I would say, like right now, our men's team is in there playing pickup. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had to kind of text my players, yo, get in here and play some pickup. <laughs> So that's one difference. But as far as being locked in and more team oriented, uh, my my female teams have been a lot more team oriented than my than my male players have. I tell everybody I, had, I used to have male players at end of the year meetings who averaged two points per game. Tell me they I was crushing their dreams and they were trying to go to the league. Like women are a lot more um, realistic <laughs> about their goals on and, and on and off the floor. So I do enjoy that piece. Okay. Well, Coach won the MIAC, ended up going to March Madness, had to match up against South Carolina, the reigning champs, held your own. I think I'm more impressed with what happened afterwards, the praise Don Staley gave you and your team about the effort you guys put in. Even Kira Mimi Wheeler got a shout out. Can you just talk about that experience? How was that for your players to go to the final? I mean, go to the tournament playing that game and still get the respect and praise mm -hmm. from Don Staley coming out, out of it? Well, um, resume-wise, I don't feel like our group felt like we deserved to get the number one overall seed. But I'll tell you, like, it was a blessing in disguise. It was comp it was a blessing in disguise. One, um, what Coach Staley, Staley said about our program, what she said about Mimi, what she said about all our players, you know. Um, so – at this point, we're just trying to get as much exposure as possible. Uh, we're trying to grow our program on and off the floor every year. So you can't kind of play. You can't pay for that kind of publicity, you know. So, like I said, at first, you know, it was a couple like, oh, man. But then, you know, once once we realized what task was in it, was ahead of us, um, we just kind of took it on, head on. And, you know, it's crazy because I did feel like we played okay. Like we missed some bunnies, some chippies. And everybody's like, y'all play great, and you still lose by 30. And then you look and you see, well, they beat everybody to by 30. So it's just kind of, you know, I guess, I guess we did play okay. It took me a, a while to come to that realization. Uh, yeah. After the game, Don Staley said, you guys are not a 16 seed mm -hmm. at all. You know, coming from her and, you know, the ongoing debate about HBCU seeds kind of getting thrown to the wolves. Mm -hmm. Despite the resume, you guys had a very impressive resume, wins over C C A A teams. How did you know? Looking forward, how do you hope that the committee will kind of reevaluate where they put HBCU teams? Well, I mean, I think when we when we put together our goals for next year, you know, we we were down Penn State with a minute left. We win that game. Now maybe that changes a little things. Alabama, we had crazy travel, but we didn't play our best basketball. We got to do better in those games next year. And I think that'll help them out a little bit. And then obviously, you know, when you have an okay showing the next year, hopefully um, they'll, they'll, they'll you know, give us a little wink or something. And just, it just help us out a little bit. Okay, what Jimmy Monroe and stated they were well coached. Yeah, we try. We try. We do what we can. Uh, you know, we, I was trying to avoid talking about uh, me as, as much as possible in this thing. But I'll say, like, my team buys in to really everything I say. And, uh, you know, that's good. It's good when you get buy-in from your locker room, 
regardless of how many minutes somebody plays, you know, when people come here, they really enjoy it, really enjoy it. So, I mean, I guess that speaks testament to our program. Yeah, I'm trying to avoid talking about me. Let's talk about anything but me. We can talk about rap some more or whatever. Anything but you. Your your relationship with South Coach Rob Jones is also a very hot, funny topic. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a little banter banter between the two of you about, you know. Of course. Of course, of course. He said something <laughs> slick when he beat me to 100 wins. So, like, like I guess, I don't know. I, he did it in a couple games less than I did it. So, you know, he said something slick, and I said something slick back. Like, but you took over a championship team. You know, just friendly stuff, you know. Um, but, no, nah, that's my guy. He puts a lot of pressure on me. Um, I was happy to work for him. He, he He's really demanding of his staff. And it, it made me ready for this opportunity at 33. A lot of people get head coaching jobs at 33 and they're not ready. You know, he got his at 33. I got mine at 33. Anthony Evans, who we played for, I think Evans got his at 34. So um, we're doing a, a, a pretty good job of pushing each other. And, um, you know, I'm always looking over. It's, it's not competition because I went here. So the more he wins, the happier I am. And, you know, before when we had our championship games, he was playing before us, and I couldn't watch him. Like I was watching him before, and it was draining. Like I, you know, I, I root for them so hard. This year, I just locked myself in the room. I, I didn't watch it at all, though. But I root for him. Um, great guy. Uh, you know, I try and keep him here forever. I told him it's almost time for him to get a seven five seven tattoo. He's been here so long. <laughs> No, he's been here a long time. I think he's going on year 16, I think, or 15 here in the area. So, um, yeah, it's about to be oh, yeah, close. Half his time. life in Virginia, half his life in New York. He's in Virginia. Yeah. Virginia. Yeah, I'm gonna get <laughs> Go ahead. What is it? I was saying, what has it been like, you know, working – like with someone like him and also building a friendship in which you can bond on multiple things, not just coaching, mm -hmm. but, you know, both of y'all are dads as well. You know, so how, how has that been just, you know, having like somebody so closely that, you know, you're cool with, that you rock with yeah. and that, you know, can relate um, all to my, different all, all the people, once you get out this business, I call them civilians. <laughs> it's like the military. Um, you know, the, everybody who's in this business, coach Jones, the rest of our men's staff, all my, female head coaches that I bother all the time. Um, you know, everybody, it's just good to have someone to, to th throw ideas off and bounce off of them. You know, you might want to do something that's a little advanced or complex and they'll bring you back to reality. Oh, this is a good idea. This isn't. But, you know, everybody kind of challenges me, challenges me to be better year in, year out. And I, I enjoy that. Coach, one thing Coach Jones whispered and told me, he said, as long as the two of you have been head coaches at Norfolk State, it's always been a dream and goal for both of you to win the MEAC together and go yeah, back to back. You guys have come close numerous times. It's seeming like yeah. it's seeming like y'all making a couple sacrifices is one or the other. So with yeah. the game plan moving forward, maybe to <laughs> maybe next to start fresh next year. We, we, for, we, we, we were 14 seconds away this year. And, you know, he already said, we. I'm going to tell you, when it does happen, he already talked about, we're going on the scheduling posters back to back, you know, arms crossed. But it hasn't happened yet. But when it does happen, you'll see our poster released. Um, but, no, it has. Like I said, 18-19, um, 21-22, uh, and now 22-23. We've been in the championship um, game both together. And it's exhausting, really. It's exhausting for our fans. It's exhausting for our teams. You know, I have <laughs> my players. Um, some of their, like, their brothers have been on the men's program. Some of my players have dated his players. It's a lot. Like, so it's, it's like, it's extra <laughs> pressure. Like, because sometimes you do. Like, I root for him really more than I root for myself. I root for that North State men's basketball program. Um, so, you know, that's, it's draining. It's draining. So, 
you know, we could play the game on some separate days that will make it a lot easier for everybody um, at Norfolk State. Man, me and Mia were watching Coach Jones' game on my laptop while we were at the SWAC tournament, and we were stressed the whole time. We were like, I just shut my computer. I was like, man, my mood is messed up now. I can't. I'm so yeah, I didn't watch, <laughs> I didn't watch, I didn't watch so two <laughs> seconds of this year. I didn't watch any of it. Um, I asked my staff, uh, Coach Lonham, Coach Cole, please text me when the game is over and I'll come in the building. I was just sitting in the car trying to prepare for Howard. Because, uh, like you said, it's an emotional roller coaster. And, you know, I watched the roller coaster before I was in Washington this year. <laughs> and shout out to Coach Lanham, by the way. Coach Lanham and I go back like four flats on a Cadillac. That was my dog when I was at FAMU. He was the head coach of FAMU, and he's just a remarkable man. I love him. He's always, like, he's always supported me and been there for me. And I remember one day I was like, hey, I need to do a story on you guys. I spent the whole practice with them. And it was just amazing. He's an amazing guy. For uh, I'm, I'm glad that he's a part of your staff because as I continue to get to know you, I mean, yeah, I, was, I can understand I why. I was excited to bring Coach Lonham on the staff. <laughs> um you know, he, I was told that he was going to try and outdress me, but we don't wear suits anymore. So we, we um, didn't have, if we go back to suits, um, I know he's in here. He'll, he'll know what's up. But we, we didn't, we're wearing sweatsuits now. And at this point, everybody's dressed down across the country um, for most games. But we'll see. If we ever go back to suits, we'll see. Coach Lionel's a sharp guy. You know, he's going to have a real green suit on, like green, green with a gold tie. But he's a great guy. Um, happy to have him around every day. Okay, I see a question in the comments. I like, what did all of you learn from this NCAA tournament experience? Not everyone gets the opportunity. Well, I would say a couple things. Number one, um, even though we saw South Carolina, you know, you you can see you're not that far away from from being good from being great. Um, you can say, hey, we could tweak a couple things here. We can have more attention to detail. You know, maybe we won't just be a mid-major top 25 team. Maybe we could put together a team that be in that top 75 RPI, you know. So we, we got to get a little deeper. Um, my bench was great this year. My sophomores pretty much won us to me at um, my, my sophomore class, Crystal White, uh, Donasia Williams, Mimi Wheeler, uh, McCoy DR, uh, Naya Fields, they put us on a red shirt freshman, Scott Robinson, they kind of put us on our back and, and carried us, even though we were kind of led by two first team all conference seniors. Um, they carried us throughout that tournament. So, you know, we can just kind of solidify our depth, build a little bit more chemistry. Being top 75 isn't that far away. And in women's basketball, you know, them top four teams, five teams, they're generally great, great every year. So, you know, we can we saw what we need to do to kind of take those next steps and and how we need to prepare um to take this thing to the next level. Mm -hmm. What's the well speaking of you preparation, my bad Mia. I'm sorry. But yeah, you saw what you needed to do. What's in the recipe? What you cooking up? A little dash a little spring. Yes. See that too. And I was gonna ask in terms of recruiting, mm -hmm. you know, and that's sure. part of preparation. I'll tell what you one you thing. Um, the tournament, I, um, I generally get a lot of emails because we do have a really good program. This year we just kind of got over the edge for the tournament, but uh, we have a really good program. The the emails and the text messages have quadrupled um, as far as just people being interested. People want to know more about Norfolk State. People want to know more about our program. So that's a great thing. You know, when you can get that, um, you can you can build a team out even more. A lot of this team we brought in during COVID, you know, so now they're becoming more, you know, familiar with the, the way, way we do things. It'll just kind of, because we have real official visits, everything will kind of be better from the recruiting aspect. Coach, you said when y'all start dressing up again, any suits in your closet you can't wait to pull out? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. My I looked. My my tailor isn't up here, Verandal. Verandal's not up here. Um, but yeah, I'm a little bit more simple. But 
Yeah, I do. I do enjoy a nice suit. Um, no, you take green and gold? Nah, never. Maybe a green or a gold top, but never quite the suit. But, you know, we, we I don't miss that part. I feel like I'm a lot more into the game now. Now that we dress down, I uh, can jump up and move a little bit better. Sometimes those suits are a little restraining. You got to tell your tailor to loosen this thread real quick so I can jump down. <laughs> He's going to do what he want. It's like a barber. Your barber never really give you the haircut you asked for. He kind of give you the haircut he want to give you. It's the same thing with my tip. He does what he wants. That's funny. What can you say about the community support since you've been there for a long time? And then also, too, you know, you are, you know, kind of from the area. So, how, like, what can you say about the community and how they supported you from well, all these um, different stages of your life? I think our final attendance numbers were around 1,100. And the, we do sell a good amount of season tickets, but sometimes programs do a lot of those numbers based upon season ticket sales. And our fans show up every Saturday, every Monday. You know, when I'm recruiting players, I could be like, hey, you came from whatever school, but we draw here. Like, you, you was playing in front of 200. You're going to play in front of 1,100 here, especially once we get to conference Monday, Saturday. Our atmosphere is really good. Our band best band in the country, um, above FAMU, above everybody else. Check the, check the numbers, check the, check the numbers. Uh, we're number one. So just that band, our cheerleaders, our atmosphere, our alumni base supports and they travel well. Like we took three buses down to South Carolina, you know, so everybody comes and they support. And, uh, and that's what you want from, a, from my stand, from my seat. Okay. I'm happy you mentioned the draw, the crowds you're playing in front of, Coach, because right now we're seeing there's a little party in the transfer portal. Oh, Every time yeah, I look yeah. up, three mo, four mo, <laughs> ten mo, yeah. a thousand, yeah. <laughs> a thousand people in the transfer portal right now. Mm -hmm. How have you kind of found that balance between maybe going partying, going a little dancing in the portal a little bit versus bringing in some of that homegrown talent like uh, you were? I mean, other than if you don't know my direct phone number, um, I haven't been in a portal at all. I, I don't know who's in there. Um, I'll look at that maybe next week sometime. Coach Line and Coach Cole, they're in the portal. They're, they're probably checking out some things for me. But if you don't know my number directly, we haven't really moved on to that. We're going to take a break for a little while. Um, the, my, my returners meeting start on Monday. And then from there, we'll probably take a look in the portal. I, you know, the, the portal is nothing but AU all over again. So, you know, at this point, the kids, the players, the women, they don't really stay on their AU programs that long. So I don't expect them to stay in a college program that long. You know, and that's just kind of the, the nature of the business at this point. That's crazy. Well, if you ever need any two 25 year olds, me and oh, me and Mia will lay some. Listen, my mid range still, my mid range still Gucci now. Okay, we'll, we'll throw you on the practice squad, see what you can do. Watch me come yeah. through. Yeah, see, see if you can run with us a little bit. Come on. I just thought about what position I played back in the day and who I would be going against, and I just, I quit already. Yeah, I'm not I'm not saying maybe no, there's not happening. Sorry, no, absolutely not. Guys aren't too bad. I take mine. I still have. I still maintain my speed for the most part. So I put a little bit more muscle on, but I'm straight. Come on, let's go. Let's roll. We'll do it, and we'll do it the week Sounds of the tip-off dinner. We'll do it. We'll do oh, it I'm then. down. It's That's perfect content. <laughs> y'all, y'all gonna get to see me lace up with the rain of me at champs. Uh, me, me, my black couple shots, Camille as well, but <laughs> they're going to run us off the gym. <laughs> but the landscape of women's basketball is growing in terms of exposure, NIL, and, you know, a lot more as a coach. How do you hope that the women's well, game will continue um, to transcend? You know, our ambassadors got to do a good job promoting the game. Uh, ESPN has done a, a great job promoting the tournament. Uh, you know, I think it's one of those things like I have friends now who are more into women's basketball when I became a head coach. They they didn't know. 
you know, so the more people that can see the quality basketball, the more they're going to enjoy it and, and continue to go to games. Um, that South Carolina crowd was pretty much a sellout the other day. Like I said, we draw. So once people get to see the game, enjoy the game, embrace the game, it's just going to build exposure for NILs and, and, and that whole piece. What's something that you've learned about the women's game that you didn't know before uh, uh, you started coaching it? A lot of different things. I would say um, my, my first, one of my first calls came and he was like, don't let the missed layups bother you because the a layup's not the same. And I used to hear some of the other staffs here like, we missed 20 missed layups or whatever, and they would stress about them. My goal was not to stress about some of the missed layups. As long as we get the rebound and put them back in. We got to put them back in, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, if you want to pack your stats, that's fine. If you want to get a, uh, you know, whoever threw you the ball will be upset that you missed their assist. But if you want to get an offensive rebound and, and put it back in, that's fine. You know, just make the second one. Um, so, so that was a little different for me because, you know, most of those guys are just kind of dropping the ball in. But, um the ability to shoot the mid-range, the ability to shoot the three. You know, I had a, a AAU coach call me who has a men and women's program. He's like, she's the best shooter in our program. You know, so just the level of shooting um, on the women's side, I was I was unaware. Okay. If you're a point guard, post players, please make that first layup now. No, nah, pass the stats. I'm a forward. I'm pass the stats. It's okay. Pay me back. <laughs> but I don't know if you saw, but Southside yeah, has entered the chat. He's in here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, coach, you know, one thing when we talk, shameless plug, Anscape, we got a whole profile on this man and his journey from men's basketball to women's basketball. But one thing you told me that stuck out, you said, you know, when you start women's basketball, they were doing more five out sets. Yeah. Whereas the men hadn't kind of gotten to that point yet, maybe three out, two in, and now you kind of seeing the men switch to that five out set. Yeah. Uh, can you just talk a little bit about some of the things you've seen on the women's side that might be, you know, a little bit more ahead of its time that the men's side slowly catches up on? Well, some of the stuff they haven't caught up on. Like there should be no reason why they're not playing quarters. Uh, Amen. Team. There should be no reason why they're not advancing the ball. Like, they can't advance the ball at the end. They're still running out of bounds sets, full court with six seconds left. Like, that should have been changed, you know. And I think one thing about our, our, our women's side is every year I get um, recommendations for rules, for AAU recruiting to, should we try this, should we try that, just to kind of grow the game every year. Um Obviously, I wasn't a head coach on the men's side, so I'm not sure how many emails they get. But I think our women's side do a, does a tremendous job of trying to grow our game every year, change the rules, just try to make our product better. Uh, so, so that's one thing. Then from the offensive standpoint, yeah, every day, every a lot of stuff was three out to win. Everybody was playing like Kansas 2016, two posts down there, you know, side ball screen lift. And when I got to the women's side, it was difficult um, defensively because the floor was so spaced. You know, a lot of teams on the men's side play gap coverage. A lot of teams on the women's side are out denying. So there are a lot of differences in the, like South Carolina. South Carolina plays old school, man to man, hand in the passing lane. We're gonna bully you defense. And um, because of back doors and some, other stuff, some of that other stuff, a lot of teams play more like Baylor, uh, force the one side on the men's side or gap coverage like like University of Virginia. I yeah, I did. I was, did. I was wondering how many basketball <laughs> questions <laughs> I was waiting for that one. I, I was waiting hey, for the basketball I was, questions. I was listening. I was surprised you didn't mention the motion or the Princeton offenses that yeah. you've seen so far. Yeah, we run a lot of chin stuff. Um, I think one thing – and when people see our team, and we do run dribble drive concepts, but I think they they think we're going to look one way and we look nothing like that. So I think that's why when we play somebody, everybody says how well coached we are because we do do some European concepts. I tell my team, we're going to try some stuff 
nobody else has tried. You know, um, I, I tell everybody use Slapping Glass on YouTube as a reference. You know, they have tremendous basketball IQ stuff up there that'll just challenge you. And I try to challenge my team. And I might throw a play in and take it out that night. Um, I might put it in that day, take it out that night because I didn't like the way it looks. Uh, but like I said, my team, they they support me through all that stuff. Yeah, for sure. Continuous growth. I like it. So as a coach, like you have, like, you know, we have our own goals, things that we want to do, things that we want to accomplish. For you personally, maybe not even yeah. like, well, it's going to be connected to your team because you're a coach, but what goals do you have for yourself and your own career? I want to do. Now, I want to be the all-time winning this women's coach here for sure. Um, How close are you, I, you to that? I don't know. I don't, I don't, you, I don't know. I think James <laughs> has like 200, 200 and something. Uh, some of his wins were D2. Some of his wins were Division One. He took us to our first NCAA championship. Um, so I'm not sure, but I mean, it'll take a couple of years. I won't be able to get that done in the next couple of years, but I want to be number one for that. Um, I just, I really want, you know, when people – when when my coaches and myself walk around and walk into these gyms, I don't want them to have to be like, hey, is this a Michigan State Spartan shirt? Like, oh, no, that's Norfolk State Spartans right there. And and I, I want that for our program, you know, because some people don't know. They wear green and white. We wear green and gold. We'll see people in the airport, you know, they'll look. But I want them to know, like, hey, these are these are the Norfolk State Spartans coming through this airport. See, I'm from Detroit. I'm going to let that Michigan State slide. It's all good. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I saw somebody in the comments. They said, Coach, you still recruit? They said, put me in, Coach. Of course. What? Let me see. Let me see. Is there a highlight tape attached? <laughs> um, if there's a highlight tape attached, I'll take a look at that and go from there. Okay. If you want to play, play for Coach Vickers, hit him up on Twitter. Drop your Instagram or email. I don't have a Twitter. Uh, Instagram or email. I don't have a Twitter. We're going to talk. Uh, Coach, we have a Twitter. We need to talk about Twitter. Take too much. <laughs> so who it could have been mine. The other day? It could have been. Because I, um, <laughs> when I became head coach, uh, administration made me get one. So I got one, but I think it might have like one tweet up there from like 2016 or something. But administration made me made me get one. So. I think you'll like it. I think you just need to try it out, and then especially when you dub into Black Twitter and uh -huh. see your Twitter. I don't want to see the crap people Last talking race. about me. I don't want to see it. Bro. Wait, what's the wildest thing you uh, see Nick? somebody on social media say about you? Oh, about me. Okay. Um, it was a page um, from FBC, uh, Kalina, one of his burner pages. He took a picture. He took, my, he took my bio picture, and then he wrote over top. Um, I'm going to bleep it out, but doesn't know bleep about basketball. And then it got a bunch of retweets, and I, it was my screensaver all of year one. So it was my screensaver. We went from 0-20 to 15 and 15. I appreciate that. But it was a uh, – it was uh, he took my face and he wrote over top of it. There's no bleep about basketball. And uh, I guess he thought somebody else should have got this job. So, But a little motivation. Sometimes you need that stuff. Coach said I can <laughs> – you need to know how to deal with Twitter slandering. All you got to no. do is call your boy, no, no, call no. your boy, no, Coach no. Jones. Because the way that he got, the way that he got slammed on Twitter for days to end up being correct. I, that's, that's, I'll try that's to get him like, to hey, okay, like, put the phone yeah, down. Yeah, just him up. Don't respond. <laughs> I try to get him not to respond to that stuff. <laughs> it's the New York in them. It's it's never. It'll never. It'll never. Never happen. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's 
Well, Coach, do you have anything that you would like to say um, as we wrap up? And No, I mean, I appreciate y'all <laughs> doing episode. this. I uh, want to highlight you know, HBCU culture, uh, highlighting our HBCU women's programs. Um, okay. You know, I think it's one of those things where uh, if I can get a, a player on a visit, more than likely they're coming. So, you know, the more exposure, the more time we can get these be these better players on campus, the more exposure we can show them, the better our programs are going to be across the board. So, you know, we need Anscape and and y'all y'all have a lot of uh, social media presence. We we need our exposure for that because we run great programs. I mean, um I saw uh, Coach Tamika in here earlier. Her Jackson State programs, obviously amazing. Uh, Ty Grace at Howard, Terrell Robinson at A and T, um, uh, Funchies at Alabama State. I just got to watch them this year. This, this is my first time really seeing them. But you know our women's product and everybody else. I tell everybody, Fred Bachelet at UMES. He does so much with that program. Um, another really good coach. Every I, Everybody in our league, we have tremendous coaches. And once we continue to do stuff like this, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to make everything better. Yeah. And we working. We got projects. We trying to do more than what we're doing currently. So just stay out. Stay on the lookout. Yeah, for sure. For sure. If you, yes. If you are favorite, we do yeah, more. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Shout out to my team. I'm Shout out to my team for <laughs> dealing with me. Um, <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm that difficult to play for, but uh, I have my moments, so I appreciate all of them. Um, you know, it, we like I said, it's 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 all about the product, and you know, we don't have a ton of people want to leave our program, and that just speaks volumes to to what we're doing. Amen. Right. Coach, Amen. Number one on our coaches' rankings. You said. Yeah, they yeah, might, move they might, me up. might change. I'm gonna send y'all some good <laughs> mixtapes from uh, Wu Tang, and I'll throw a little Nikki in there for y'all. But some some yeah. Wu Tang, Mace J that y'all can listen to before games and Mace. before right stories. Already got me with yeah. Mace. Yeah, man, that's my that's that was my favorite rapper growing up. So I know that's right. You got the you oh, got, I got the good playlist. Before we let you go, okay. I need give me your top three songs on that playlist. Oh, my my playlist, I'm gonna tell you what I listen to before games. I listen to Victory, that's Puff, Big, and Busta Rhymes. I listen to Triumph, you'll you look, Pete the names, Triumph, um, <laughs> that's Wu Tang. And then in the tournament, I was listening to We Gonna Make It every round. Uh, that's 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 Jada and Styles. So, yeah, we, you know, I wanna make sure that the titles and the song structure is kinda going with what I'm trying to do that day. So, that day. Yeah, yeah, though that, that's what was my playlist. Um, nah. When I was in college, I used to try and listen to a little bit of gospel, so I wouldn't run out there and foul a lot, be angry and foul and then foul out the game. So, <laughs> so in college, I was doing the gospel, just kind of, you know, keeping myself <laughs> mellow. Yeah, yeah get your, get your mellow and, and <laughs> college. But now, before the games, I'm trying to get a little bit more hype so I can get my team right. I know that's right. Well, if you really, really want to get hype, listen to some oh, um, NBA Young Boy. <laughs> Going That'll from Kirk Franklin really, really, really Stomp <laughs> to Wu Tang Clan to Young Boy. Yeah, young Boy. I, I don't know if I could do that one, but. <laughs> yeah, I know. You can only do like one song and then you got to like yeah, cleanse I... your mind. But yeah, Fresh Prince of, Fresh Prince of Utah yeah, is really is that popular. Big State? Right oh. No, it's just a song. You might have heard it. It's the parade inside my nah, city. Nah. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard that. <laughs> okay, well, Bro. yeah. Uh, what? You hit that <laughs> note, though. You hit but that for note, good though. reason. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I did it better than John Morant. If you know, you know. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Coach, thank, thank you so much you. for being on. We appreciate you so much we can't wait to get up there we already have it planned that we're going to be at the tip off dinner and yeah. that weekend we'll do your basketball workout I too think... we'll be on the practice line <laughs> but thank you yeah I, I, I got i got i got like one good <laughs> pair of shoes left <laughs> uh, 
to hooping. You can't hoop in just any kind I of shoe. I think shoes. I got my own posits I can, laying around. I'm, no, it's not. I know, that's not oh, somebody, <laughs> I'm thinking with you, it's a, it's a parade inside yeah. my city. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the song. You gotta listen to it. But you guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another week of HBCU period. We love you guys, everybody who supports us. Coach, thank you so much for your time. Oh. And hey, behold, guys. <laughs> oh, she gotta say the green. Oh, the green and gold. <laughs> thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Take care. <laughs> thank you.